Hello there, how's it going? Today I'm going to give you a more in-depth view into how to adjust and maintain Honda, Rancher, Four Tracks, uh, Recon, Foreman, uh, Re Rencon, the whole deal. The drum brakes they have in the front. Everyone has problems with them. I've yet to have one where they work like they're supposed to. Today I'm going to show you how to make them work like they're supposed to, at least for a little while they you know wear out again tools you're gonna need a jack because you got to get the wheel off 17 millimeter socket or wrench get the lug nuts 8 millimeter socket to get the drum off assorted brushes to clean out any schmoo that's in there flathead screwdriver hammer you're gonna need a flashlight when you go to adjust them later I would suggest have a bench vise wire wheel or at least a really good wire brush you're going to need some lithium grease when you go to put it back together you're going to need a pair of pliers to break loose the little adjusters so let's get started I'll see if I can put you in a good vantage point mind the clickety clack there you go missing a stud or it's got a wore off stud going on so those there this Let's pop these loose for now came off on this one usually they stick there's one there's the other there's the drum yummy this one's gonna need new pads but you can see all the crust in here I'm going to try and clean that out what happens you can see there's no seal right here it's all dry rotted away it's gone I'm sure this one's not sealing like it's supposed to either. It gets moisture in there. It has nowhere to go. It just corrodes and corrodes and corrodes. So that needs to be resurfaced. These pads need to be replaced. But I don't have some, so I'm going to show you how to put it together without the pads. The piece you're going to be looking for today, which it looks like someone else has chewed on it already, is this little spinner here. There's another one on the back side, identical to that one supposed to be able to do is reach through the little red hole and be able to spin these but as you can see it barely wants to move it's seized right here where the little ball comes out of this and the back one is the same so I'm going to show you how to pop those out and redo them get you a screwdriver pry up on the e-brake pad Bit off of there a little bit. Get your hammer. Give her a couple light taps. That's right, pop out of there. Pry up on the brake pad. You just work her up. Just like so. Let that sit back down in there. This, so you can see it, maybe, right here, camera. This is your little self-adjuster bolt. You reach in there with a the screwdriver on these cogs, and it's supposed to make this extend to self-adjust brake pads. It always seizes up, so it's all full of crust. So I'm going to show you how to fix this real quick. All right, back. Maybe you can see what I'm doing here. This thing will focus. Got your piece covered in schmoo. We're going to start 
put it in the vise gently so you don't damage this piece and put a bunch of dents in it. We'll clean the crust off. Now, you see how it's got the flat spots where this cut is? You can kind of see it. If you look at it, you got your cross going across. You want to put it like that in the vise where it's hitting them flat spots it doesn't pinch them together. Put this in there under a little bit of tension. Bear pliers. Or actually, you know what? Hit it first with this. That knocks the crust off of this thread sticking out the back. Now, you just work it. Until you get that bolt out. Alright. And this one's reverse thread because it's on the bottom. Didn't think of that. But you just thread her off of there. Not too bad. I've had them before where they were just seized like nothing else. There's your threaded part as you can see in there a little bit. Threads are mostly clean. Most of the time what crusts over be this guy. This is your adjuster bolt. See all the threads are all nasty. You keep him in the vise. Run it over with this real quick. shot of juju Put the adjuster nut back on extra shot of juju right here for where it goes back in the brake that's that on how to fix your adjuster bolt and we'll go back over to the four wheeler and do it a second time all right Put these back in. We'll pry your brake pad back up. Up out of the way. There goes something. I don't know what that is. Well, see how she's in there like that? You'll make sure that this flat piece in there is facing straight where the brake pad sets down in it. As a precaution, I can give it a couple turns just to get started with because I know this one's going to need some serious adjusting with these pads being all tore up but now I'm going to go ahead and just clean some crud off of there a little bit what happened here this is a piece of a retainer that goes there to holds the pad flush to the backing plate. It needs to come off. Caused all kinds of chaos in here. But same deal to get the bottom one off. Tap over the hammer a few times. I got that loose. Brake pad, loose her up. Let some more junk fall out. Yeah, this one's good and crusty here. Need to change the ball joints on this thing too. Almost. 
This one's nice and crusty. You saw the process on the last one, so I'll spare it for you on this one. Alright, I'm back. Another one freshly re uh, built, or whatever you want to call it. Same deal as before. Oh, and to answer your questions, why I use lithium grease, I hate anisees. It gets everywhere and you can never get rid of it. You work with anisees one time, you will find it on your clothes, on your furniture, in your hair, everywhere, for months. No matter how careful you are, you can wear gloves, you can wear a white suit. You work with the NICs one time, it's everywhere and it's done and over. Alright. Now this one happens to have all-time four-wheel drive on this specific model. And because it's lifted, they had a spool put in on the front, which locks the front axles together. So it's they don't spin independent anymore. So it's got a little bit of play. Now had I the parts, I would change this seal, the seal on the drum here, and I would replace the brake pads. I don't have them. I'll come back in here in a week or two when I get the parts, change these out. You go to change pads, they're very simple. They literally remove the little keepers that go here. The brake pad pulls out, and you literally just pull it out. It's got two little springs behind it, but you can pull it up, off, and the springs will walk around this. Same deal for putting it back in. Now as for the drum, I'm going to go just run the wire wheel inside of there and get rid of all that rust and I'll be right back. Alright. Better than it was. See it's got a bit of a shine in there now. At least it's not full of crusty rust. A little rubber plug. Oops. On for technical difficulties. Gravity's not playing nice today. Little rubber plug here. Pop that out because this is your adjustment port. Alright. Also, your two little bolt holes line up on here. Line them up like so. They'll line up. There they go. Two little bolts go in their respective holes. Oh, by the way, it is Christmas time if you hear the radio. It is in exactly six days. See, here in South Louisiana, it is 39 degrees right now. Tomorrow, it will be 70 because Louisiana. All right. Now see the whole space in here, it needs to be right here, or right here, because that's where your two adjusters are. To check your brake adjustment, you can move the brake rotor, and if you notice, there's really no noise and no drag to it. You want to be able to do is be able to turn this and just hear a real light, kind of like a drag to it, because that's where the brake pads are nice, where when you go to squeeze the handle, it doesn't go all the way down. So now I'm going to get on the other side and try and pry these wheels to make it turn. Yeah, that's not happening on this side. Alright. There. That should do. Hang on for the clickety. Alright. Got your hole here. You saw the adjustment screw I resurfaced. If the camera will focus in there, maybe. Maybe not. I might have to set some... I don't know. Maybe you can see in there. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, yeah, you can see it there. Basically, you do, is you should be able to see a little arrow in there. So 
Maybe I can get a little more of it. Um, and um, camera just does not want to cooperate. Uh, hold on a sec. All right, I got it working now. You can see the little thing in there. There should be an arrow. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it tells you which way to turn it. Basically, you do is you shove the screwdriver in there, pry, and you make the little arm go up. And that's what tensions your brake pads, gets them preset. So, I'm going to put you on the little stand right here, if it'll cooperate. Maybe. Oh, boy. All right, let's see. Think that'll get you? Yeah. Flashlight in here. Now, if this was a two-wheel drive bike or a 4x4 four four selectable, it would be easier. So you can just start to hear it rub. So that side's done. I'll flip this around and do the other side. There's the other side. Same deal as before. Nope, other way. Alrighty, so they're adjusted now, just as best as I'm getting them adjusted. Put your little rubber thing in here, make sure it's seated all the way in there it'll fall out, and then you will have leaks, worse than the leaks in the drum itself, of course. And we'll put the wheel back on, and call it a day. Be chained. I'll do a video on how to change studs because there's one on the back of this machine that needs one too. I'm going to go to my local Honda Steeler and um, see about ordering one. There's one thing they are proud. I could go to Home Depot and find a bolt like this. Of course not the same quality and it would be a quarter the price. Oh. Let her off her jack. Pump the brake a few times. That's nice and firm. And the machine will not roll until I release the brake and then it rolls. Now would be a good time to check your fluid level. Which this one, you can see a little bubble rate. Right at the end of my finger, if it'll focus. Yeah, you see the little bubble there. Right up there, so you know it's full. But now would be a good time you could pop the top, see what color it is. If it's not clear, just suck it out with a little squeezy turkey baster. Put some fresh fluid in there. You could bleed them if you want to, but something this old, the bleeders are all going to be rusted out. So it's easy enough just to change it out here. But, if that video was helpful, actually, you know what, let me give you some bonus. Not many people know how to adjust the brakes on the rear. Most of the time they don't work. 
people just assume they're bad. Now, sometimes they are bad, but you can see back here these two little thingies. You turn these to tighten it up, pulls the slack out of the cable. Once these are bottomed out where there's no spring left on this cable, I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe. Probably not. No, it's not going to do it. But, oh, there a little bit. There's a little spring on the back side here. And when it gets all the way tight, that tells you that this brake pad's wore out. Pop the wheel off, and it's almost the same as the front. You just pull the springs off. I might do a video on how to change it later. But, this video has been helpful to you. If you enjoyed watching, give me a, a like, thumbs up, comment, rate, subscribe. Have an awesome day, and if it's your birthday, have a happy birthday.